Hi boys and girls, Rusty Dagger here. I'm here today to explain how my dance floor works. If you haven't seen the original video already, I highly recommend you do. Otherwise, some of this may not make a whole lot of sense. There'll be a link on the screen. So, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so, the way I'm going to explain this is I'm going to walk you through some of the components, and then I'm going to show you the screen last because it's... It's really the whole feature of the video, so I'm going to keep it till the end. Uh, I may provide a shortcut annotation on the screen about now to skip to that part if you just want to see how the screen itself works and skip all the rest of this that I'm about to say. Um, so, let's get started. So, the start button is the white line here. It runs around and it connects to all this white stuff. It has uh, four of these uh, pulse lengtheners, generators, whatever you want to call them. A, uh, not quite sure the correct term, but it, it just changes the signal length so that it's right when it comes into the reader here. Now, the reader itself is a little covered over by the wood, which is the reset line. I'll get to that in a minute. But the reader is a 9-tick delay reader, except for where there's a repeater on here, then it's a 10-tick delay to allow the extra delay for the repeater up here. So it runs, yeah, somewhere around here there should be an extra repeater somewhere, or something. No, it's one less, that's right, not one more, it's one less, where the repeaters are. So it catches up, it reads a bit faster than, that was right, that took me a little while to work out. Uh... So, data around here somewhere, on one of these sides, I forget which, is this. This is a color code to how the pixels on the screen are divided up into the data storage. As you can see, there are 14 different colors here, excluding white and black, which are used for on the start line and the reading. So, 16 colors, minus 2, 40 quick math. So as you can see this whole side here is controlled by the green data storage which is up here. Now so theoretically you could copy this diagram down here to above the screen right up here which is where I had it when I was programming it and all these lights here would be lining up as to where they are stored in the data tower. So, the way it's divided up is this row is green, then starting here, because it skips one for the other side, it's orange, pink or whatever it is, purple, pink. And as you can see, green, orange, purple, pink down here. So every layer in towards the center is a layer down one of the four sides. So, let's just say I wanted to program a pixel. Now, the way this data, I better explain the data storage a little more first. The data storage itself contains 36 slots, spaces for images. Each image is stored this way. So one image, each one of these black box lines of black box is an image. So one image, two image, three image, four image, five image, and it's read this way through time. So this is time traveling here. So time travels this way, and pixels travel this way. Images are stored in each slot this way. Now, because now you understand that, say I want to change the first image. Now, the first image from the original slide is the four center blocks. Now, they're going to be stored right at the bottom, because they're right in the middle. Now, the dark storage has all these levers in place. These levers here are debug levers that are on top of the first black block on every single row next to the reader. So this will debug the first image. This will debug the first and second image, which I don't recommend to do. You probably only want one of these on at a time. Now, you can see here that when I turn this on, these two pixels on the first row are programmed to be on. If I debug the second row, 
they're still both on third row, still all on. And in fourth row, one of them's disappeared then. So on. And now they both disappeared because it's moved out of the set of the little worm I animated. So to change that, I've just flicked this lever and changes whether it's debugged or not. You don't actually have to flick that, you can do this live. Um, so the levers all control. The levers are all being rotated the same way so that you can easily tell whether they're on or off just by looking at them and not thinking about it because if some were this way uh, I had major OCD issues about placing levers. It, it took me ages. By the way, they don't place relating to where you're facing like pistons. It's, it's really not helpful. They should do that. It took me ages, but anyway. Okay, so they're stored that way, so I should go ahead and I should turn the whole side on here, so I'm just going to flick this light blue side on all the way down on image 1. Now, now that I've done that, it's debugging. Now, by default, this has nothing programmed. So, say I want to turn this one here on. Now, because this is a short side that only contains three rows, it starts counting here. So, here's the first row at 1, second row at 1, so if I want to turn this one here on, it's going to be second row down, row 2. So if I go down to the second one here, down to the dark blue, I go to row 2, 1, 2, turn this on, it'll turn on the pixel just there. So locating the pixels is really easy, especially if you use that chart I have made on the ground. It'll It numbers everything in order. And it really will explain everything. So if you need to reprogram this to design your own patterns for the dance floor, that's very easily done. It took me about 20-30 minutes to program all 36 of these images in for the animation, but I did draw up a bit of a plan in a paint.net file first, so I knew what I was going to program in before starting. That being said, if you want more than 36 images, you can easily, very easily, extend these data storages out this way more or out that way or that way or that way just remember if you extend one you have to extend them all and um, you'll have to do these repeaters in here and as I was saying before they need to be in every 15 blocks or so but uh, sometimes it varies a little bit once you get it started it's in between the levers and every time there's a repeater there is a repeater with a shortened delay see all these are maxed out and this one's got three that's to allow it, the reader to skip ahead of the delay that this is going to cause. So it keeps up on the screen in time. You'll also have to remove this. This is the reset line. This wooden line is the reset line. This is what persists. Uh, by persist, I mean holds the creeper face from disappearing on the screen. It's just a simple um, latch. Once this one here turns on, it loops itself and holds it. And the only way to remove that hold is to lift the gold block here. And, and this also holds it. And what it does is it turns this here on, which holds this off, which allows this to come on, and it holds the last row of reading on. So it's the same as turning on this lever, effectively. And that just carries down, and it feeds into the same spot on every single layer and it does that for all of them so you'll need to remove that if you wish to extend the data otherwise what's going to happen is you end up with um, uh, images adding together so you'll have image 1 and image uh, 36 or so or something like that added together and it won't be pretty so you don't want to do that uh, the white line needs a, a tick length of about uh, 9 ticks it's worked out to be for the video, the official video, I had um, a jukebox with a bud switch connected to this and it took me a bit of uh, hackery and trickery to get it around to the right length. So let's not go into that. Now, you're all been waiting for this part. The screen itself. How do I individually control the lamps without them controlling the one next to them? Simple. It's so simple you're going to hit yourself. Another layer of lamps. Yes, more lamps, more control. Okay, so let me go down on the ground and I'll explain how come this is working. Down here on the ground. 
So how I worked this out, uh, full credits to my brother, Ice Dragon God. He was actually playing around in his creative, and I happened to look over at his screen and seen that he had this built. What he had built was this. And this is all he had built. And I seen that the one on top here was not powering the ones next to it, and I thought, aha, maybe I can use that. So I went ahead and I did a little bit of testing, added another one in, all the way around, and started playing with the controls underneath it, turning these off and on. And you have individually controlled lamps on top. The design can sort of be translated. If this is the disappointing part about what I've done here. It doesn't so much work sideways. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. There's limitations, and I'll show you why. Limitations are this. You can... If I grab a repeater quickly. Must be a repeater. And I put one here. I can control just the middle one. Or I can control just the sides. However, if you wanted to put another row on top, there's not a way that I know of, or can think of off the top of my head, of how you could go about powering the second row, because you can't put a repeater on top of a repeater. And you can't just do a wall of torches leading into this. Hold on. Because torches don't make it control the power through. However, you don't really need another row of lamps. You just have to do a lot of declumping to get all these wires separated so you can control them individually. So it is possible, it's just going to be a lot more work getting all these wires back here separated and uncluttered so they don't interfere with each other. I may work on something like that next. But don't hold your breath for it because I'm a busy server owner. I have a life, a job, etc, etc. As we all do. So if you have uh, any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to post below. I will also accept uh, auto accept all. No, I shouldn't say auto-accept. I will accept any video responses involving the screen, so if you pick your own pattern, I will accept the video response, or if you make a video showcasing the screen or something like that, you find some other use for it, uh, I will accept the video response, no matter who you are. So, I'm cool like that. I really don't mind. It's, you know, no big deal to me at all.